welcome to this episode of Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets presented by Prize Picks on the Mayo Media Network. I am Gary and Thorne. We are breaking down everything you need to know for Saturday, June the 5th and the six-game featured slate that kicks off at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time over on DraftKings. There is also an afternoon slate, as I'm sure you know. We got baseball all day on Saturday, but for the purposes of our DFS conversation, we're specifically going to be focusing on that 6 p.m. evening slate. However, we can talk about some of those afternoon games when we're talking about prize picks. And if you guys don't know what prize picks is, first off, welcome to these videos, because clearly you're new here. However, head on over to prizepicks.com, use the promo code MMNMLB, and your first deposit will be matched up to $100. And here's who I like on prize picks on Saturday. We get things started with a line that I'm really kind of confused by. Uh, I almost had to double check to make sure this wasn't like game one of a double header, but Tim Anderson, his fantasy point prop is only six and a half against Ter- Tarek Skubal. Uh, Skubal has been better lately. I'll, I'll give him that. His last three starts have actually been pretty good. He's been striking out a lot of opponents, but for the season as a whole, he's still giving up 2.84 home runs per nine to right-handed batters. His barrel rate is still 15.4%. His FIP is hovering around 6. I've got to see it for a lot longer before I trust Scooble against anybody, let alone probably the best hitting lineup in baseball when it comes to left-handed pitching. Uh, the White Sox, WRC+, plus, WOBA, slugging percentage, whatever you want to go by, they have crushed left-handed pitching so far this season. And while Anderson hasn't exactly had the same numbers he's had throughout his career against lefties, we know he just hits lefties well. And he's going to be hitting leadoff in this game. It's a great matchup. He probably gets five plate appearances. And even if he doesn't get those six and a half fantasy points against Scooble, he probably gets them against the Detroit bullpen that has been amongst the worst ERAs basically since the season started. So this is a fantastic matchup. I would also say Jose Abreu, his fantasy point prop is six and a half. I like the over there too, but we'll just stick with one for the purposes of this segment. Tim Anderson is the one I like most. Six and a half, take the over against the Tigers. The other guy I wanted to talk about, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, His fantasy point prop is just seven and a half. It's not a great matchup against Jose Urquidy. Urquidy's been really good his last four starts we'll actually get into that in a little bit however if you had to pick the splits where Urquidy's been at his worst in 2021 it's against right-handed batters and it's away from Minute Maid Park he's actually give up a giving up a 511 slugging percentage within those two splits uh that is also a 371 woba to right-handed batters on the road so far this season Uh, Guerrero, pretty much the top of the board in every single offensive category, coming off an amazing month of May. I just think that regardless of matchup, he is matchup proof. Um, Seven and a half is just a relatively low number, especially in Buffalo where he's hit very well going back to 2020 when the Jays were also playing their games in Salem Field. So Vladimir Guerrero Jr. over seven and a half fantasy points. Tim Anderson over six and a half fantasy points on Saturday. Let us now move to that six game featured slate on DraftKings. And I got to say, this is a pitching rich slate. We've got six games. That means 12 starters. Quick math. Can just do it in my head. It's amazing. Um, 33% of the starters on this slate, I would say are legitimate National League Cy Young candidates. And they're the top four guys on the board. We've got Jacob DeGrom. You've probably heard of him, 11,100. We've got Clayton Kershaw, 10,200, going up against the Braves. Kevin Gosman, who has been untouchable the past six weeks. He's got the Cubs, so probably the toughest matchup. I guess DeGrom's got San Diego, but at this point, DeGrom, who really cares what the matchup is. Uh, Gosman... The Cubs, they've been hitting really well as of late. Uh, He's 8,900, so some definite opportunity to mine some value there. And then Joe Musgrove against the Mets is just 8,700. Definitely a product 
of being on a slate with Jacob deGrom and Clayton Kershaw. Obviously, someone has to be priced down on a slate this small, and it seems like Gosman and Musgrove are the guys who have had a little bit of value created for them because of the presence of those two big names. Let's start with DeGrom, because obviously he's viable. This is someone who, for the season, is averaging 34.3 DraftKings points per start, and he doesn't always win the game. So, it's incredible what he's been able to do. His last two starts, with a limited pitch count, he's still managed to be highly effective and highly efficient, considering his strikeout rate within those two outings, but still... 11,100 against a really good Padres lineup. I mean, again, he's matchup proof, but the Padres are, I don't know, one of the six or seven best offenses in all of baseball. They're pretty much back to full health. Uh, You know, Trent Grisham would be nice, but at this point, they've got most of their big bats back. And those two starts, he's thrown 63 pitches and 70 pitches. So the Mets are clearly being cautious with their ace. And I don't know, like 85 pitches? Is, is is that probably what he's going to max out at in this start? I, I guess it's possible he comes out and throws 100. Like, I didn't think Framber Valdez was going to throw 100 pitches in his last start, and he did. So sometimes these things just sort of happen, but it really does seem like the Mets are being as cautious as possible with DeGrom right now. And I think that has to put a bit of a red flag next to his name, because not only is he so expensive, he's always this expensive, but there are other really good pitchers on this slate. And if I don't think DeGrom's throwing 90 pitches, can I say he's $2,500 better than Joe Musgrove? I don't think I can, especially considering how bad the Mets offense has been as of late. Uh, I mean, the over-under in this game is five and a half. So that really tells you what every book thinks about the quality of these two pitchers. And it's not just DeGrom. It's that Musgrove's been really, really good too. In fact, Musgrove's last four starts, 0.42 ERA in 21 and two-thirds innings, a 1.93 FIP, a 30.9% strikeout rate, and he's holding opponents to a 159 Woba. No one is getting hits off of Joe Musgrove. And yes, the Mets are getting slightly healthier, uh, Pete Alonso is back, Kevin Pillar is back, although if Kevin Pillar is hitting leadoff for you, that's not exactly a great thing. Um, you know, they're, they're getting a little bit better too, like Francisco Lindor is slowly heating up, um, Dominic Smith has been much better the past 10, 8 days. Um, so look, the Mets, the Mets have still found ways to put runs on the board. But when you look at the lineup they're going to put out tomorrow, I don't know what it is as of yet, but I can assure you it's not going to be that great. It's going to feature like Billy McKinney and Brandon Drury and stuff like that. So I think that this is a really good spot for Joe Musgrove, who has been fantastic as of late. And again, if if Jacob deGrom is not someone that you believe can throw 100 pitches tomorrow, I think Joe Musgrove's the better play, considering the price point, just dollar for dollar. Uh, And again, Kershaw, Gossman, uh, Kershaw's a bit of a tough sell against the Braves. He's been beat up in two of his last four starts, but Gosman, I, I still like against the Cubs at 8,900. Uh, there are also some really cheap pitchers on this slate. This isn't top heavy. This there, There's some value to be found towards the bottom of this slate. And Alex Cobb, I think he's going to be pretty popular, but I think that's okay. Um, Cobb is $6,900 going up against the Mariners. That's the reason Cobb is going to be popular, because the Mariners, across the last 30 days, have a 284 Woba, which is the third worst mark in all of baseball. They've been no-hit twice this season. They've seemingly been shut out every other day. So it's one of the better matchups you can draw as a pitcher. And Cobb, kind of quietly, I know there's been some injuries mixed in this season. He's only made seven starts. But in those seven starts, he's got a 2.2 FIP, a 2.44 XFIP, and a 30.1% strikeout rate. His last three starts, 17 innings thrown, just one earned run, 20 strikeouts, and he's held opponents to a 182 slugging percentage. So much like Dylan Bundy, Alex Cobb has gone to Los Angeles, left Camden Yards, and kind of refound himself. And he's been really, really good. And I think he's a trustworthy option, sub-7K, against a Mariners team that just, I don't fear at all. 
when it comes to DFS. Uh, the other pitcher I wanted to talk about, nowhere near the same level of confidence, but I think it bears mentioning. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez, who, yes, has given up 15 earned runs in his last three starts. I am aware. Uh, I'm not a crazy person. This this is risky. But the Yankees, uh, as we saw again on Friday, uh, a really nice start from Nathan Eovaldi, um, they just can't hit right now. They, they've got tons of guys in their lineup that are way below the Mendoza line. Really, aside from Aaron Judge, no one can do anything right now in pinstripes. So I'm pretty comfortable throwing out anyone, even if it is a struggling Eduardo Rodriguez. He's just $6,600, which looks just weird. I mean, Erod is never that cheap. Uh, but again, the Yankees across the last 14 days, the last two weeks, 19.4% strikeout rate. That is the second highest mark in all of baseball. And really it's the highest mark in all of baseball for our purposes, because the only team with a higher mark is Boston and Erod can't pitch against his own team. So this is the best matchup he could draw from a strikeout standpoint. And for the season as a whole, I think it has to be addressed that Eduardo Rodriguez has been one of the unluckiest guys in baseball by the ERA estimators. Um, he's got a 5.64 ERA, but his expected ERA is a full two runs lower at 3.60. So between his own pedigree and talent, the Yankees' woes and just aptitude for striking out right now, and the fact that there's definitely some positive regression on the horizon for Rodriguez— I think he's a pretty good spot here. And this is the kind of slate, one of these six-game slates where you're going to have to do something a little risky if you want to separate yourself in a GPP. I think latching on to Eduardo Rodriguez, who no one's going to want a part of because he's been struggling so badly, um, I think it could turn out to be pretty good. He's got a lot of upside at the very least. Not a lot of floor, ton of upside at $6,600. Okay, let's round out the DFS conversation by talking about a stack. And because we've got a couple pretty cheap options in Alex Cobb and Eduardo Rodriguez, I don't feel too bad that saying my favorite stack of this slate is the Oakland Athletics in Colorado. I know, using people at Coors, what a concept. However, I did want to point out that I don't think the Athletics have been properly priced up for Coors Field. We saw this a little bit with the last series at Coors uh, when the Rangers visited Coors uh, Adolis Garcia was probably the best example of what I'm talking about. Game one, he was $3,900. Game two, he was $4,500. Game three, he was $5,000. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the algorithm, I don't know, to notice that a, that a team is in Colorado. I don't know. But sometimes if, if you get in early on a series, you'll find that teams haven't been properly adjusted for the Coors Field stuff. And the athletics, I mean, yes, Matt Olson is justifiably expensive um, on tomorrow's slate, on Saturday's slate, but he's always hovering around $5,000. So that's really nothing new. Everyone else is less than 5K. It would be nice if Loriano was healthy and in the lineup because he has mashed left-handed pitching so far this season. But really, the Athletics as a whole have hit lefties well. They come into Friday's slate, sixth in baseball, with in WRC plus against Southpaws with a 114 number. And a big part of that is just they've got a lot of guys who are solid, above average to good against left-handed pitching. Um, Mark Canna has a 143 WRC plus against left-handed pitching so far this season. He's just $4,500 and he's going to hit leadoff in this game. Uh, Chad Pinder is $3,700. He's got positional eligibility uh, and positional flexibility. Um, he hit second the last time the Athletics faced a left-handed pitcher, and I would expect him to do that again considering his career numbers within the split. Jed Lowry is $3,900. Um, you know, I, I, he's been definitely cooling down since April. Uh, a lot of his numbers are weighted towards a big April, but he's less than 4K, and he's hit third the last couple of times the A's have faced a left-handed pitcher. He's a switch hitter, so regardless of who comes in and pitches in this game after Kyle Freeland, um, he's going to have the platoon advantage. So that's a really nice feature uh, with someone like Jed Lowry. And then Stephen Piscotti is a name to really keep an eye on. Right now, he's day-to-day. -day, he's got an ankle issue, uh, but it doesn't seem overly serious. And he usually gets into the lineup against lefties hitting 6th or 7th or 8th 
even if he's hitting eighth, it's Coors Field, and he is priced at the minimum at $2,000. And you go through Stephen Piscotty's career, he can hit left-handed pitching. So those three guys, well, four guys, Kana, Pinder, Lowry, and if Piscotty is in the lineup, I really like them. And then obviously you can use Matt Chapman, who's been much better against lefties so far this season. And even Matt Olson left on left, you're fine with that because he's probably going to get a couple of plate appearances against a right-handed reliever later on in the game. And he also hasn't been terrible left on left so far this season. Okay, before we get out of here, let's talk about some best bets for Saturday's slate. And I'm going to start it with the Houston Astros. I know I said I liked Vladimir Guerrero Jr., but that's sort of like on an island. I like Houston in this game. It is Urquidy against Ross Stripling, and if that seems like a lopsided pitching matchup, you are correct. Uh, Jose Urquidy, his last four starts, a 1.14 ERA, and he has held opponents, uh, opponents, opponents to a 207 WOBA in that span of time. For comparison's sake, let's just say that Ross Stripling has not been that good at suppressing opponents. In fact, as a starting pitcher in 2021, Stripling is giving up a 389 Woba to opposing hitters. Um, look, this is pretty much a pick 'em. Uh, Houston is minus 115 on Friday night. That might move around a little bit, but I think that's pretty good value even on the road. Uh, just, I don't trust Ross Stripling. That's really what this comes down to. So I like Houston money line. I also like Tampa's money line. Uh, right now, minus 150 on the road against the Rangers. They've got Rich Hill going to the mound, who has been incredible his last six starts, pitching to a .78 ERA and a .84 whip over that span of time. He's been just, like, magnificent. He's been crazy. And I know as soon as you start trusting Rich Hill, that's seemingly when it all starts to fall apart. But I'm going to buy in, especially against a Rangers lineup that across the last 30 days has the lowest WOBA in baseball at 283. They've also been much worse against left-handed pitching than they've been against right-handed pitching because of how many of their big power bats are left-handed. The Rays, they've also, you know, I know they've dropped three of their last five games, three of their last four games, actually. Um, but still, the last 30 games, they're 23-7, and seven, and they're 6-1 and one the last seven times they've seen a left-handed opponent start a game. And Colby Allard is going to start this game for the Rangers. So again, a pretty lopsided pitching matchup. The Rays are just one of the best teams in baseball, and I think minus 150 isn't too steep a price to pay for a team that good on the road. So Rays minus 150 against the Rangers, and Astros minus 115 against the Blue Jays. And that's going to do it. For this episode of Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets presented by Prize Picks on the Mayo Media Network, I am Gary and Thorne, and I will catch you guys next time.